Hi everyone and welcome to a new episode in the Multiverse video series. Today we're going to learn how to use MLflow projects from R. Now if you don't remember exactly what MLflow is, I strongly encourage you to take a look at one of our previous Multiverse videos where we introduce what MLflow is. Now as a quick recap, uh, MLflow is an open source project to help you manage the machine learning lifecycle. It has three main components, uh, MLflow tracking, MLflow projects, and MLflow models. Now, MLflow tracking, um, we already covered on the uh, introductory video to MLflow. It basically allows you to log your parameters, models, and metrics easily into a central server that multiple people can use to track uh, the progress in your data science workflows. Uh, in this video, we're mostly, uh, we're actually only going to focus on MLflow projects. Now, if you look at the definition of what an MLflow project is, uh, it's a packaging format for reproducible runs on any platform. Kind of give, give some hints of what exactly is, but it's still a little bit fuzzy. So uh, let's take a quick look at how this looks like. So uh, first of all, an MLflow project has an actual MLflow project file. So what is this MLflow project file? Well, it's just a YAML file that describes what your R script is doing or your Python script, for, for instance. And you know, as, uh, as the definition of uh, this feature was mentioning, uh, it is agnostic to programming languages and even platforms. So um, kind of like that's the value of using MLflow projects. Um, defining a YAML file that is independent to R and Python that your data engineering team can run with ease. So let's just try to create one that is similar to the one we have on this particular example. And again, since it's just a text file, all we have to do is uh, just copy paste it. Uh, let's call this my training or my train, whatever. Um, project files. And in general, MLflow projects support dependencies. So if you're using Conda, you can use Python. If you're using R, you can use Packrat and specify the snapshot file here. Uh, we're not going to go into dependencies in this video, so we're just going to remove that for now. You can have multiple entry files. We're going to only use one in this case. And then we want to define our parameters for uh, our training uh, script. Now, uh, again, we're going to reuse the code that we wrote on the previous video. And if you remember from that particular video, basically all we did was uh, we used the pins package to download a Wines quality data set. Um, then we basically loaded the split data into the features and the response variables. And we logged the parameters and then we used GLMnet to create a simple model and log some predictions. So, uh, pardon, uh, pardon me, uh, log some metrics, RMSE and MA. That was about it. So uh, in order to make this work with projects, what we want to do is uh, we want to copy the parameters, alpha and lambda, and define them in our project file. Um, it's actually not required to define, define a project file. Um, a, lot of, a lot of these things, if a project file is not defined, uh, MLflow will still uh, execute your project. Uh, but you know, it's, it's a good practice to define uh, an actual project file. So what we want to do is we want to say, on a, we're going to run a R script. In this case, it's train.r. Uh, yeah. And then we want to pass the actual parameters, which is uh, the regularization and the data file. And actually, I think for these to be proper ML flow parameters, we would have to define something like this. But again, uh, you know, the, the great thing is that even if you didn't define a project file, uh, we're going to be able to do a lot of use, reuse a lot of the functionality, but it's, it's a good practice to have, to have this project file. And then uh, the name of this particular uh, project file would be ML project. That's about it. And yeah, so uh, kind of like, you know, if, if you were an R user, it's likely that your workflow will end up here. You will basically, you know, create some uh, 
uh, model that you know you consider appropriate. And then a lot of times what happens is that the maintenance of this model or deployment to production is sometimes or at, uh, many times handed off to the data engineering team. Um, so for, for a second, or at least for this video, just pretend that we have the role of being a data engineer uh, productionizing some of the models written in R. So how would this look like? Well, uh, you know, either yourself or a data engineer can write the uh, project file. And then uh, the great thing is that they, uh, as a data engineer, we don't even need to worry about R or Python. All we, all we can use is MLflow, which uh, you can easily install with pip install MLflow. And uh, once you have MLflow installed as a data as a data engineer, you don't need to worry about uh, the specifics of Python or R. Uh, what we would want to do is actually run uh, MLflow run. And uh, we, can, we can execute this particular project file by, uh, by pointing it to the current directory and then specifying the entry point, which is the entry point to, the, uh, to this particular uh, file, which it would be train.r. And then we would specify the parameters. We could say alpha equals 0 0.2 and lambda equals 0 0.5, whatever. Now, before we run this, there's one change we, we do need to perform on our previous code. And it's as follows. As you can see here, we're logging the parameters, uh, but we're actually not reading the parameters at all. So what we want to do is we want to replace MLflow, uh, the value with you know, uh, the parameter that, that we had uh, as default, uh, but give the option to uh, data engineer, for instance, to be able to parameterize the parameters of this particular R script. So yeah, that, that should be it. Uh, now we can run it. So we, let's try to run this. Oh, actually we have a mistake here. We need to change this to alpha. We have alpha, alpha, lambda, lambda. And then we can run this particular uh, script. And we are actually here, let me add minus P for this parameter. Um, and, uh, you know, as you can see here, we're executing R code or potentially Python code. And we're, we're all doing it from the CLI, which is quite useful to productize this. For instance, you could be using Airflow or some other platform to um, schedule these runs. And, you know, um, it makes it much, much easier to manage. All right, so once we have this, if we were, you know, if we put our hat back of being a data scientist, we can take a look at ML uh, on the MLflow UI and make sure that the data engineer actually, uh, you know, the results from the data engineer match our results or our expectations. So we can launch the UI and we can see that there is a run here with the parameters that we specified, which should be exactly those ones, alpha of O2 and lambda of O5, which uh, makes sense. And again, we have our metrics, so we can kind of like keep track of when this got executed with the timestamp and follow up kind of like this workflow on our own, even if the model already got pro deployed to production or why not. All right, so this is, this is quite great. There's one more feature worth mentioning in projects. So you usually want to check in your code to GitHub, right? That is just a best practice in data science in general, machine learning with, with whichever programming language you're using. So we can go ahead and check in this particular code to GitHub, which I already did for us. And uh, we can take a look at that here. So it's just a very small repo. It has the training file that we just uh, take a look at and you know, the ML, ML project file, that's, that's about it. So, so one of the great things that you could do with MLflow is you can rerun that particular um, instance and you can run it directly from GitHub. So again, if we were data engineers, we probably don't even care, um, you know, like, um, you know, the, the specific programming language that you're using to build your models. So we might want to just go ahead and directly run them from GitHub, which is also a bit best practice because we know for sure which is the version that got executed to create this particular model. 
Right, so just for fun, let's just change also the uh, some of the values. Let's just make it 25. Oh, shoot. I, uh, yeah, I almost thought I lost that line. And let's just rerun this. So as you can see, MLflow is fetching the project from GitHub. Uh, it's bringing it down. If there were dependencies specified, it would actually restore the dependencies. And then it would actually train the model. We can take again a look at the MLflow UI. We should have a new run, which we do with the new parameters, uh, 25 and 55, and you know different um, metrics that we're logging. And uh, the great thing is that in this particular case, we actually use a, a GitHub. So MLflow is linking at this particular run to the uh, MLflow repo. So we can just click it and we should be able to see it here. And also we have the commit. So you know if we wanted to see the files in that for that particular commit, then we can also quite easily just uh, open up the UI and see the re see the details. Yeah. So again, this was uh, MLflow projects. Now, before we close on this, uh, two things were worth uh, mentioning is that while you can run the scripts locally the way we do it here, uh, you know, so you may have your own, um, you know, like workflow manager, you know, scheduling things at night or whatever. Uh, so you can you can just use batch to execute MLflow and run a particular project. Um, you can also use uh, a few environments that are already supported. For instance, one of them is uh, Databricks. So if you're using Databricks, you can quite easily execute your project in Databricks. Or if you have Kubernetes, you can also just use a Kubernetes cluster, uh, which can be quite useful if you're doing hyperparameter tuning, um, you know, on top of your um, MLflow projects. Or if you simply have uh, a huge data set, uh, you might want to consider something like either Spark to scale and maybe run it, at, uh, run the particular project in Kubernetes overnight, or why not? But yeah, uh, yeah, that that covers what uh, kind of like the basics of MLflow projects. And again, if if you're new to MLflow, you should watch uh, Getting Started with MLflow from R as one of our previous videos. And I'll I'll try to uh, record um, in the not so distant future a video explaining how to use the MLflow models feature also from R. All right. Well, thank you so much for watching, and uh, stay tuned.